As twilight approaches the excavation site, Daisy is keeping watch. She's worried about Scapelli's threat when a plumber's van pulls up and the door slowly slides open. Luigi steps out. Hi. <laughs> I, I was just in the neighborhood. I'm glad it's you. Across the street, Iggy and Spike watch Luigi help Daisy into the van. When the van pulls away, they follow. Inside the Bella Napoli restaurant, Mario's girlfriend, Daniela, quizzes Luigi's new love interest. Okay, let me get this straight. Scapelli blasted and they found bones and what in the rocks? Iridium. Unbelievable. You know what that is? No, but how could something called Iridium not be important? It means that a meteor may have hit a long time ago. We think that could be what wiped out the dinosaurs. Wow. There were dinosaurs in Brooklyn? Relax, Luigi. There used to be Dodgers here, too. Dinner arrives, and the conversation turns to Daisy's unusual pallor. You should come down to the tannin salon. I'd get you set up for cheap. You've been spending too much time underground, honey, and I promise, no tan lines as long as you take off that incredible rock you've got there. Well, actually, I don't take it off. I know it's weird, but it's the only thing I've got from when I was found. I'm sorry. Found? I was abandoned. I grew up in St. Teresa's on Fulton Street. Wow. So you don't know who your mother or father are either? No. What do you mean, either? Because Mario brought me up. I guess that sort of makes him my mother, uh, my, my father, my, my uncle, my whole family. <laughs> <laughs> After dinner, Daniela suggests that Luigi walk Daisy back to the excavation site. Daniela and Mario will drive the van. It all makes perfect sense. Except to Iggy and Spike, waiting outside for Daisy to climb back into the van. Instead, they see Daniela. Hair different, clothes different, different height. Devious. She's wearing a disguise. Yeah, I could spot it right away. She thinks just because all these humans look alike, she's going to fool us. Iggy and Spike pull off to tail the van. They follow it to Daniela's place, where Daniela kisses Mario goodnight. When Mario drives away, Iggy and Spike let themselves in to Daniela's apartment. <coughs> Meanwhile, Daisy and Luigi had made their way to the excavation site. Once there, they descend into an underground tunnel and enter the fossil room. Wow! Awesome! While most kids were watching cartoons, I was reading about dinosaurs. I used to make the nuns take me to the Museum of Natural History, and I wouldn't want to leave. I don't understand why, but I've been drawn to this stuff all my life. I feel at home here. Luigi admires Daisy in the dim light as she holds up a fossilized jaw full of sharp teeth. Like, look at this. Guys like him used to roam the earth. What was he thinking before he died? Probably... No! I don't want to die! <laughs> oh, the proportions of the bones here, the opposable thumb, it's, it's almost as if he was a monster trying to be a human being. It's beautiful. Luigi leans close and is about to kiss Daisy when they are interrupted by sounds from deep within the tunnel. What's down there? The sump pumps. They start toward the noise, but then hear the sound of footsteps coming directly toward them. Dousing their flashlights, they press up against the tunnel wall, just in time to see two figures dash out of the pump room and around the corner. Even in the darkness, Luigi can see the letters on their uniforms. Scapellis. Water is flowing into the passageway, and being the confident plumber that he is, Luigi knows exactly how to handle the situation. He runs to the phone and calls Mario. By the time Mario arrives, the water is ankle deep. Strap on your tools, kid. We're going in. Mario, I was on a date. Luigi, when are you going to learn? Never go anywhere without your tools. They're probably still in the van. Get them and meet me down below. Moments later in the pump room, Mario, in the manner of a surgeon, holds out his palm to Luigi. Isla wrench. Crescent, no. Cumberland gauge. Luigi winks at Daisy and points to his big brother. Piece of cake. Guy knows his stuff. Not far away, two funny-looking guys scratch their heads. Wrong again. How many is that we got wrong? Five. Oh, for five. 
What percent is that anyway? I don't know. Let me think. You know, whatever it is, it ain't good. I'm telling you, he's gonna kill us. Suddenly, Iggy reacts, clamping his fingers into Spike's arm. His nostrils flare. Up ahead. Smell that? Smell it? It's her. I definitely know it's her. Iggy and Spike drop into crouches and move forward in the darkness, slowly and silently. In a way that's not quite human, they stalk their prey. At last, they spot her. But first, they have to take care of the two plumbers. <coughs> Daisy resists, but she's no match. They drag her deeper, deeper, deeper into the tunnel. Back in the pump room, Luigi is the first to come too. He looks around for Daisy, and realizing she's gone, rouses Mario. The brothers hear a distant voice. The brothers gaze in disbelief. The voice is coming from a wall made of solid rock. As they stare, the wall ripples, and Daisy's face appears through the surface. Luigi! Without thinking, Luigi reaches for her. His hand goes right through the wall. When he pulls his hand back, it's clutching the pendant. Angrily, Luigi thumps the rock with his fist. He's sucked right in. Mario, not about to let his baby brother go unsupervised, pounds the rock. Nothing. He kicks the rock. Nothing. Close to exhaustion, he collapses against it. Mario tumbles through a cosmic vortex, a bizarre distortion of shifting dimensions. Then, little by little, shapes become solid, and he finds himself in a chamber sprawled next to his brother. Did we die? No, if we went down below, there'd be accordion music. They follow Daisy's faint voice out of the chamber and through a tunnel. Emerging, they stare in disbelief. They're at the top of a ramp, looking out over throngs of odd-looking people in a dingy, distorted, fungus-covered version of New York. What is this? I don't know. I ain't been to Manhattan for a couple of weeks. Looks like it's been a bad couple of weeks. Maybe it's the Manhattan of the future, and we were just knocked unconscious for a hundred years or something. Or maybe it's the Bronx of today. No wonder they tell you never to go up here. Maybe it's a parallel dimension. You know, an alternate world to ours, sharing the same space as us, but totally unreachable, except by tunnel, and then by liquid rock, and... I know, I know, I'm reaching. <laughs>